What's going on, y'all? It's Antone back again. Crime Time with Tone Thursdays. I am in Clear Lake, Texas, near Houston, to south, kind of near Galveston. I'm here to talk about the case of a quadruple murder that happened here in July 18th, 2003. So, Christine Paloila, P-A-O-L-I-L-L-A. I was called Christine, I don't know how to say her last name. So, she's the one surrounding kind of the murders and how everything started. So, she was born on March 31st, 1986 in Long Island. She moved to Texas when she was 17. She went to Clear Lake High School out here. So, when she went to high school out here, she befriended a couple girls, Rachel Coralotis and Tiffany Rowell. And they kind of helped Christine improve her appearance and you know get to know people at the school and they just kind of hung out with her and helped her out and boosted her confidence and all that kind of stuff so she was actually voted Miss Irresistible in 2003 at high school so she was doing good with them for a while um, eventually she got kind of noticed and popular a little bit and she met a guy named Chris Snyder who is 21 at the time her mom and dad disapproved of him because of his not because of his age but because of his drug use and criminal history Christine didn't do any drugs initially until she st started dating him they had a tumultuous relationship by all accounts uh, both were abusive. Christine was known to be very, very jealous. Um, she would even like sit outside his house, saying she's not gonna, not gonna leave. And if she does, and if he does try to make her leave, she would kill his family and all this kind of stuff. So she was just like a really jealous person. But they were dating and even though it was a crazy fighting abusive relationship they're really close and still dating and actually Christine began to distance herself from like her family because she was hanging with uh, Chris so much Rachel and Tiffany would hang out with and welcome her but they didn't want to really want Chris around so uh, they would still hang out from time to time, but she would, Christine would come around less and less and hang out with them just because she would be with Chris all the time and they didn't want him around. So on July 18th, Tiffany, her boyfriend, Marcus, Priscilla, Rachel, and Adelbert Sanchez, who was the cousin of Marcus. They were hanging out here at Tiffany's house, which I'll be coming up on here in a little bit. And Tiffany's home, which was owned by her family before she moved in. So this was known like as a party house or the hangout house because this was Tiffany's house now. There was no uh, grown ups or parents there anymore. So they would have a lot of parties here. So on that day, they were supposed to st throw like a party at 6 30 p.m. and supposedly a friend they called her Brittany that's not her real name but they she just want to remain anonymous so the person one of the one of Tiffany's friends which they named Brittany called about four o'clock that day to talk to talk to Tiffany and I guess see if the party was still on but she didn't hear anything from her so she just thought they were, you know, getting ready and getting ready for the party and all that kind of stuff. So she ended up still going up there, Brittany and some other friends, it was like three other people, two or three other people came up to the house at about six o'clock or a little thereafter. And 
they knocked at the door and there was no nobody was answering them. but they heard that the tv was on so they can hear the tv but nobody was answering the door but anyway they finally get in i don't know if the door was open or whatever but they get into the house and they see four bodies tiffany and her boyfriend marcus were on the couch just kind of reclined back Looked like they were just watching TV. Dalbert, he was on the floor. And also, Rachel, she was on the floor. And she had a phone by her hand. Um, it came out later that it looked like she was trying to call 911. So, going back a little bit, uh, Adalbert, one of the other guys that was in there, had moved to Clear Lake just like a week or two prior. Um, to get away from the crime. I'm not sure where he's from, but he was trying to get away from all the crime. So even though Christine didn't hang with them anymore, she still took the news hard um, about the deaths of her two friends. So one neighbor, while they were doing an investigation, one neighbor said that they heard some banging around 3.30 p.m. And another one Another neighbor had said they seen a man and woman in all black. One had a one had a bandana over her head on the girl. The only standout feature that they can um, see that was mentioned was the girl had abnormally large eyes. And from that, sketches were made and put out to the public. So these were the sketches. Um, that they put out there as you can see the eyes that do look a little big and buggy so during the investigation the police um, did find out that Marcus used to deal drugs and Adalbert had connections with the Mexican Mafia but there was no signs of them still doing that kind of thing but they did think this had something to do with drugs so Anyway, they they had an idea that might be uh, due to drugs, but the case kind of went cold. Um, so about three years went by, and nothing was happening. Rachel's father, Rachel's father wouldn't give up. He actually raised a lot of money and got the sketches out there, and he put them all throughout the city, all throughout like each exit had like a billboard showing the victims and of course his daughter so just trying to get any information uh, out there to try to see if anybody knew something so eventually like anonymous call came from someone saying they recognized the woman who he had met in a drug rehab and she had actually gave details on the murder and that's how they knew like because the cops got a whole lot of calls they got hundreds of calls and a lot of them go nowhere but this one he said um there's details basically saying the girl she went there with her boyfriend uh, and the girl that died with the phone by which was rachel had actually she had actually ran out of bullets, so she hit her with the butt of the gun and actually killed her with, like, blunt force trauma. So she was shot, I believe, six times, but she didn't die from the gunshot. She died from blunt force trauma. So that was details that nobody else knew. So he knew that he knew a lot about the, about the murder. We asked him who it was, and he said, Christina... By uh, Lola, um, Christina. <laughs> so, um, and it made sense because if you look at the pictures, her eyes do look kind of scary. Um, they are big and wide. Um, I'd be kind of creepy just kind of wake up in the middle of the night and seeing that. But anyway, um, so they apprehended her at a motel which was said to be like really dirty. Um, 
Supposedly she was staying at a motel for like eight months and never left. There was all kind of drugs. She was doing heroin, all kind of like over a hundred needles were found at the site. So at this time she was married and this was like 2005, end of 2005. So she's married at this time. She had a 300K payout from her father's death in a construction accident. This happened when she was two years old, but she didn't get the payout until she was 18. So she got it and she used basically most of that money on heroin and other drugs. So they talked to Christine and she finally talked about the murder. So she said on that day of the murders, um, Christine and her boyfriend uh, wanted drugs, but didn't have any and didn't have the money. So they went to the house knowing that they were there and Rachel let them in because they knew them. Tiffany and her boyfriend were watching the movie and everything was fine at first. And then they pulled out guns and demanded drugs and money. So it's not sure, they're not sure if they got anything, but they did demand it and they knew they couldn't leave witnesses. So they had to kill them. Like I said, Rachel was the last one alive and she kind of crawled behind the couch. They said she dialed nine and one before Christine had seen her. Then she ended up beating her with the gun and killing her. So after the murders, Chris and Christine went to Walgreens, I mean, went to clean up and then he took her to work at Walgreens. She worked in Walgreens at a, I believe the makeup section. So this is the house that it happened at. It's here on a dead end street. So they walked in the door and then I guess where the windows at, that's where the TVs are and everything. So in June 2006, when police issued a warrant for Chris, who was in Florida, and somehow uh, Chris found out that they were looking for him, and he came up, he came up missing. He kind of disappeared for a while. So they he disappeared, and they got a tip that he left like a month ago and that nobody seen him again. He left, went to like a wooded area. So they went in there and the wooded area to where they pointed out and they found his decomposing body. Um, he had overdosed on some prescription pills. But Christine has, she gets life, um, got life in prison. Um, she couldn't get the death penalty because she was 17 at the time. So everybody in the house was, you know, young in high school, so like 17 to you know, 19, maybe 20. Everybody's pretty young. So that's it for today. Appreciate y'all for hanging out with me on another Thursday. So be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. If you like the videos, I'll holler at y'all later.